Hey, welcome back. We've got the black 49cc Urban Express out at the beginning of March. It's a beautiful day. Let's take it out for a ride, shall we? And we've got uh, GPS going as well because we're going to take it out for a little bit of a top speed run. See what she can do. And I've got the AX31 belt on. Uh, which seems to have been the best performer to date with this particular setup. And for those of you who are not familiar with the setup, it is a, we'll start with the exhaust, MLM People's Pipe for the Urban Express, VM18 carburetor uh, with the uh, MLM VM18 intake for the Urban Express, Gosh, what main jet am I running? I'm either running a 62 and a half or a 65 main jet. And I think the slide, uh, the needle clip is on the second richest position. And then the idle jet, man, I don't know. Um, somewhere around a 20, give or take 2.5. I've forgotten. And uh, as I said, the AX31 belt, and I don't even know how many grams are in the variator anymore. Uh, probably something around 30, 33, I would guess. And I've got the uh, Stage 6 MK2 clutch. And uh, what else do I got going on? I've just got a cone mesh air filter. Um, the Melosi gears, the racing gears, 14 inch rear wheel, 14 inch front wheel. Um, and, you know, I'm sure I'm forgetting some things, but uh, anyways, we're heading out here. And uh, as some of you probably know, I've been going... Uh, the goal was uh, 50 miles an hour on a 49cc engine. Uh, the cylinder has been modified <laughs> several times. Uh, I think I have raised the exhaust port to the point which if I raised it any further, I would ruin this cylinder. Uh, as with all Urban Express bikes that have that rear pulley, um, there there is a, uh, a I don't know what to call it, but uh, kind of a zone you reach. I think it's around 30 miles an hour, low 30s on this bike, where uh, it's got to overcome that dead zone. I'll call it the dead zone. How about that? The dead zone on the Urban Express. My blue Urban Express has it too. It's right around 35 miles an hour. And he, excuse me, even more pronounced. Tougher to get it out of the dead zone. But this one, uh, not so bad. And I wonder if it, that has anything to do with the belt width in terms of uh, getting out of the dead zone. But if you look at the rear pulley and watch how it moves and the mechanism, you'll see there's a straight slot in there probably need to do a video on it if I already have it, where uh, if you had a diagonal slot, uh, you'd keep climbing, but uh, I, I, I guess you just got to pull through it by just increasing the RPMs or something like that. But anyhow, this bike really runs nice, and I'm sure there are going to be some inevitable comparisons to the blue Urban Express. And uh, which has got the DR kit is the main difference uh, between the two bikes. And it's got a VM20 carburetor as well, so a slightly bigger carburetor. Um, the main difference between these two bikes is the blue and silver Urban Express is heavily restricted with this zero turn mower, air box, air cartridge thing. The main reason I'm running that is because uh, it is just way too loud and that that mower air box really quiets it down and makes it tolerable to ride. Uh, 
I think it's just a combination of the DR kit and the pipe and the big carburetor. Man, is that, and, you know, I've got to live in my neighborhood and you know, try not to piss everybody off. But um, And you'll notice a little bit of difference uh, between the trail tech speedometer and the GPS. And I'm not sure. Oh, well, I know there's you know some GPS lag. You know, if, if you get in a spot where the cell reception is uh, not as great, you, know, you might get a little GPS lag. But anyways, uh, kind of making a little warm-up run, and uh, but eventually it, it looks like the GPS and the uh, the trail tech will mesh. So now the trail tech is kind of uh, calibrated. I use one of those radar signs and uh, just went back past it several times. And you know, I would go past it and you know see where I was on the trail tech, and then you know compare that to what was on the sign, and then adjust it and do it again, and then adjust it and then do it again, and adjust it, blah blah. You're supposed to, you know, adjust it with the circumference of the front tire, but uh, I don't know why, but I had trouble getting that to work out. So I was just like, man, I'm just going to use this radar sign that's always here. And then, of course, the trouble with the radar sign is, okay, if uh, I look at the radar sign, it says 39, and I look down, and I've got 39 point something on the trail tag. I forget how it would work out, but the point is, um, you know, where is the radar sign catching you? And then how long does it take to refresh, you know, to catch you again? Because, you know, it monitors your speed for a certain amount of, for a range, a distance, and I don't know exactly what that is. But anyways, you know, if it says 39 and... I look down and my trail text is 39.5, um, you know, is the GPS catching me, you know, right then, is it catching me a second before, you know, a half second before, whatever, so, and, you know, since the trail tech has tenths of a mile per hour and the radar sign doesn't, you know, you could be uh, a mile an hour or more off, so I'm sure that's you know, a lot of you didn't even want to know about that. But uh, uh, I guess there's an you know there's there's always an inherent issue with you know, any speed capturing device. Uh, obviously, the uh, the stock speedometer only goes to 35, so that's kind of useless. Uh, so we got to work with the technology we have. So uh, and then you know, so I'm just pointing out, you know, some of the problems with the technology. Uh, there's a little bit of a GPS lag. Although this speedometer I am, I've, I'm using, and I've used about four of them, seems to be about the best. And uh, I think it does not rely entirely upon. A GPS signal. I think it also makes use of the iPhone accelerometer. Uh, at least that's what I remember reading. So, uh, anyhow, we've done enough warm up, enough yakety yak. Let's get down to brass tacks and see what we can do here, folks. I'm going to quit yapping, let you tune in for the full volume experience coming at you right now. Enjoy. Sit back, put your seatbelt on, and ride, Daddy, ride.
Well, there you go. The journey has taken about a year. I think I started last March. Of course, winter kind of interfered with uh, testing. Uh, I've probably made uh, seven to eight hundred miles or more in test runs on trying to accomplish the 50-50 feet. <laughs> uh, gone through God knows how many belt changes, variator weight changes, uh, at least uh, one clutch change and numerous uh, modifications of the clutch. Um, and then taking the Dremel to that cylinder. I actually had two cylinders that I used in this process. Carburetor jettings, oh my lord. Uh, tire changes again I'm, I'm doing 14 14 uh, 14 in the front 14 inch rear uh, so you know stay low to the ground and uh, so anyways I think I'd like to hit 51 or 52 just to lock it in you know so it wasn't just like a fluke uh, and but the, the you know the other part of me is saying man this bike runs really nice uh, really nice really well um, it you know has I, I could be critical you know it's got that kind of little dead zone which isn't too bad on this bike but that's just kind of unless you change out the rear pulley to something else uh, then you know you're gonna have to deal with that but uh, you know this may have been done before with an urban express I don't know but uh, here it is. I'm submitting it to you for your review and, and viewing pleasure. And uh, I don't know where to. Uh, I think I'll sit back and enjoy it for a little while. And then, uh, of course, you know, I got some other surprises coming. Big surprises. Interesting stuff. You know, you'll like it. I think you will. I already like it myself. And I haven't even done it yet, but the idea sounds pretty good where the ideas sounded pretty good. So, um, learned a lot. Uh, I've only been able to capture, I don't know, what is this, episode 14 or something like that. Uh, out of what I've captured on film, believe me, you, there is uh, a ton of footage and a ton of runs that I didn't even video. Uh, here we're going at it again. We might as well put this on there as well. Um, so, Definitely learned a lot. Uh, the nice thing about the Urban Express with the, the belt drive is uh, a lot of times when you make these changes to the uh, cylinder, uh, you lose a lot of low end. The nice thing with the Urban Express, uh, the belt drive, the clutch, the variator is you can kind of tune out a lot of that low end loss. Whereas like on a single speed bike like the Honda Express with QT50, you know, you just got to deal with, you, know, you can work on it a little bit, but for the most part, uh, uh, you're going to have to deal with crappy low end. So, uh, anyways, I'll quit yapping. Thanks for joining me on the ride. This has been kind of a long video. We'll cut it off right here as we make our left turn down. Uh, I don't even know, you know, uh, Sunset Boulevard. So, uh, Hey, thanks for watching. We'll catch you real soon.